everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads, and in today's video, I'm going to show you the process from the start and the thought to actual construction as well as the finishing of a simple wire working project. I'm going to be doing a simple stringing, but instead of actually using a beading cable or a bead string, I'm going to be using some 24 and 26 possibly gauge wire. I'm going to show this design again from the concept and the idea to the steps along the way, the changes that are made and the design process that goes through going from a idea in your head to actually working it up using the techniques that are needed to create the necklace and to do this intro to wire working video. So I have a lot of things laying on my bead mat here. And I wanna go through again the thought process that was behind this. And I'm actually making this um, as a silent auction item for my son's school. And I wanted to make something special, something that I would really like and I really love the school and would um, enjoy making something that would hopefully bring in a large amount and give them a fun piece to kind of show off at their silent auction. So I've gathered some high-end gemstones and the idea that I have and the concept that I have is to kind of mix metal tones that way it's appealing to a lot of different people. I want to use primarily wire. The reason I want to use wire is because it's a really inexpensive way to do a really fine project. Um, I can use 24 gauge, 26 gauge gold filled wire and it's going to be a really high end project because I'm working with high end stones here, but it's not going to have a huge price tag because the wire overall for 5 feet of 24 gauge wire is $11 or so. I do have most of the money that's going to be wrapped up in this project in this higher end gemstones. I have the advantage that I can stop this video, which I'm going to do several times, run out to 5,000 square feet of beads, change things up if I need to, and change up my concept a little bit. My original concept is that I want a multi-strand high-end gemstone necklace. I don't want the whole thing to be beaded because I don't want it really heavy on the neck. I also want it appealing to someone that may be a little bit bigger or someone that may be really petite. The best way to do that is going to be to attach most of the attention to the front of the necklace and I'm going to slim it down. Whether or not I use chain or leather or cording in the back, I'm not sure yet. But I'm going to, I have a couple different options for that multi-strand. My original idea is that I'm going to take these five strands of high-end gemstones, mix in some inexpensive beads but that will keep their color, keep their finish, like pewter and brass and some gold filled, and do a lot of wire working. To do the wire working, I have different tools here as well. The gemstones that I have are briolettes in Crystal Labrador Fool. I have the metal coated Crystal Labrador in the little two by threes, some garnet, some natural turquoise, and some natural amber. These are also things that I enjoy myself, so I figured they would hopefully be enjoyed by others. Again, I'm mainly gonna be using 24 gauge wire. I might get to the point that I need to run out to the store and actually get 26 gauge wire, because some of these high-end gemstones may not fit through the 24 gauge wire. As far as beads go, like I said, I gathered up some pewter, some Thai silver, some brass, and some gold filled, and I'll kind of work those in, I think. I'm not set on using them yet. In addition to that, I have my pliers that are handy to start this wire working process. I have a wire cutters because I'm going to be using wire. I have a round nose pliers because it's mainly going to be chain linked through coiled eye pins. I have a bent needle nose pliers. You can use a flat one. And then I have a um, nylon jaw pliers. This is going to help if I get a little bit kind of crazy with the wire and the coiling. This can help to smooth out the wire. I may not even need these at all. And if you're just starting out and kind of enjoying going from this concept to actually creating your own, you don't need these pliers. They're helpful and they're handy, but they're not an essential thing that you need to invest your money in right away. There's something to get kind of along the way. If you are starting out and you are not comfortable doing all of the wire working right away, try out the same thing, but use a little bit less expensive projects and a little bit use some brass wire or some gold plated or some copper wire. You still get a lovely look with that too, but it's good to practice on and you don't feel as intimidated. So I have all these gemstones and the first thing I'm going to do is actually cut apart the strands and make little piles and kind of decide on the actual um, spacing of them. Do I want them to be all the same colors next to one another? Do I want to mix them up? I'm not exactly sure of the concept. Like I said, I have two different three-hold 
spacers or links here that I'm going to work in. I'm leaning towards the tie ones rather than the gold filled connectors. One, because they have a little bit higher of a price tag, but two, I think it'll be a little bit more fun and funky with the tie spacers. They both have three holes in them, and I'm thinking three strands is not going to be enough. So I'm gonna double that concept and think about doing six strands, two per loop that I'm holding on to. That's where I'm gonna start out. I'm gonna cut apart all these strands, make little piles, and then I'll show you the introduction to starting that chain link and getting my design ideas actually working into the project. So the first thing I did was kind of lay out a pile of the different beads that I chose. Right away, when laying them out, I realized I needed a little bit more color and maybe a little bit more of the metal tones. I had some aluminum silver um, 11 Toho sea beads, and I chose Toho because they're a little bit more boxy and a little bit less rounded. They kind of go with that organic look. And then I also put on some of these three millimeter um, Indian red Swarovski crystals, still going high end, and then uh, one and a half by two millimeter Potomac crystals, because I want a little bit of more color contrast. I took my cording and, or my wire rather, and I cut off about eight inches to 10 inches of my wire. The first thing I did was make one loop just to see what I thought of my spacers and kind of get an idea for using some of those spacers together. I used the gold filled on that pewter nut bead and to see what I could get. What I also want to do is check to make sure that now that my beads are through here that the 24 gauge wire is going to be the correct wire gauge choice. I might need to mix up some of the wire and actually get some 26 gauge as well. So I know my amber is going to fit on no problem. My turquoise I can see has a bigger hole. Swarovski crystals are nowhere going to fit on. So the briolettes are kind of a gamble. They're going to fit on. And I also know the briolettes I'm not really going to use independently. I'm going to group those up because I want them to be one of the bigger focuses as well. The garnet is a little bit of a gamble and that looks like that's gonna fit on as well too. Now that being said, I might have several that don't actually fit on because a lot of the higher end gemstones are hand cut in India. The first thing I'm going to do is start to make a bunch of these little links. However, I am gonna start linking them together. You can also do the concept that once you have the link that you like, you can easily pick that up and kind of go on if you want. So I'll start showing you how I like this look of kind of that golden um, little tiny gold filled bead cap. It's a four by five millimeter bead cap along the sides of this uh, pewter, what is it, six millimeter, I think, um, little washer nut. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my round nose pliers and determine where I want to have my first loop size. And generally speaking, I want to use about the same size loop. If I want, then I can take a permanent marker, a Sharpie marker, and a little bit of rubbing alcohol will take this off, but I can mark on my round nose pliers exactly where I want to make my loops if I consistently want to make them the same size. To make the first loop, I'm going to hold the wire leaving about a, uh, a little less than a half an inch. I hold below the wire and turn the round nose pliers away from me 90 degrees. If you need more help that I'm gonna be giving you on these coiled eye pins, go ahead and watch the coiled eye pin video. From here, I'm looking at both jaws kind of of the pliers and that wire is coming straight out from my chest. From here, I'm gonna go over the top of the round nose pliers till it touches the wire on the other side, turn the pliers slightly in my hand and then take that wire back 90 degrees. That's gonna be my first little eye pin. What I wanna do now is coil that eye pin by holding on to it with my pliers, holding on to that little head there, and then I'm gonna take my wire and wrap that wire around the base of that little head. Almost looks like a little noose or a little uh, light bulb. I'm gonna have a tiny little piece left there hanging out at the base. Have a little cup nearby and handy. Take your cutters with that flat side closest down and cut off that extra wire. Now, I didn't cover my hand because you would completely miss it, but if you cover your hand, it actually goes into the dish rather than flies across towards the camera. Move that dish off to the side, and now I'm going to go in and do another one here of my little spacers. So I have some of these ready to go that I can link on to my beads as I'm going. And I want a couple of these in the design. I'm going to let them all drop down next to that coiled eye pin. Hold and leave just enough space there above that coiled eye pin to make the same coiled eye pin on the other side. I hold it so that you can't really see the loop. It's facing straight up and back. 
and rather than actually seeing it. That way when you create the next loop, they're facing in the same direction. Hold that bead and the wire, bend the pliers back 90 degrees. This time the wire is gonna be longer coming over the top because it's connected to that longer piece. Flip the jaws from top to bottom. Take that over. If it happens to be a little bit further than you want it to be and a little bit further away, you can kind of roll it down and then just pull that over again. Again, at this point, if you want to, you could have made a little um, Sharpie marker line to fix that. And I'm gonna want to then coil down my three coils. After I coil down the three coils, get my dish again. And this time it's a bead so it can drop in. Or you can have a separate little cup there for your finished products and where you go in. After a bunch of these are made and the very last thing on my project, I'll take my needle nose pliers and just kind of pinch the edges and make sure that those edges are completely, completely squished down so that way it doesn't grab onto any jewelry as you're working with it. So I'll continue building a couple of those. But once I have a couple of those built, what I'm gonna do is start to create my chain. To do so, I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and you're just gonna see it fast now. And this is why I end up using a little bit more of my wire and also um, why I cut off about eight inches. I'm going to now link this into the loop that I just made. So you're linking it right on there. So to show it again, I made my loop like I did before. I slid the one that's already finished down on the long piece of wire. And now I have my little loop. You can either move that kind of off to the side, hold with your needle nose pliers, and then twist the wire around. I don't worry about the scrap wire or what I'm getting rid of because it's not worth it. I'm gonna cut. This time I'll put my hand over. The wire little bit goes in, and now I have my first link. Then I'm gonna determine what my first color bead is. So, and I don't know for sure yet that this is gonna be the middle, the top, the bottom. I think what I'll do is add a little bit of color first. So I will add maybe a piece of my amber, another piece of my amber. Push that down against the design. And now do a little, another coil on this side. Again, hold it so that it's vertical, bend back over the top and this gets really repetitive and you get really good at it. It's one of those things that takes practice so don't be intimidated at first. And the gold filled wire, even though it's a little bit pricier than some of the craft wire, it's so nice and bendable. From here, I'll just keep going. If I don't like a bead in a certain position, I will go off and just kind of cut it and get something else on there as well. So now I have another one done. Slide on the other side. If you need to, you can use your needle nose pliers, or your round nose pliers rather, if you don't have a lot of space with those needle nose. Twist around my three twists, and there's no really rule to those three twists. I like to do at least two. And then I have my little dish there that I'll push the end in. And I'd like to do at least two, but sometimes I do three because um, I like the look of odd numbers. From here, I wanna get some of that turquoise on to brighten up the end. And I think what I'll do actually is, yeah, just put the turquoise on. I was gonna put a piece of brass bead with it, but I think I'll just go turquoise. I don't want it to be too big yet. Twist this end. And you can see kind of this concept and you can see kind of how quickly you can progress. So you'll get to a point where you don't actually have a ton of wire left. Sometimes you can use it and you have enough, sometimes you don't. So I made my little loop here. I'm gonna link this onto the turquoise and this is just gonna proceed with me picking up beads at random. If I had a concept in mind where I wanted the beads to all be the same color, then I would obviously be going with a pattern. When I cut this, I put it off screen, I put it into the dish, and then I bring it back. I generally keep my dish off to the side. From here, I wanna bring a little bit of that darker look into it. So I think I'm gonna try garnet. Get that darker garnet. Again, the idea of this is to do six strands of this, but the strands are only gonna be about five inches. I don't want it to be the whole way back. So this garnet doesn't quite fit on. I'm spinning it, seeing if I can get it on. If I can't get it on, I'll cut the wire just a tiny little bit at the tip, see if that makes a difference. Sometimes the tips get a little bit 
frayed up. If I still can't get it on, oh, made a difference for that. If I still can't get it on, I'd go out and actually grab some 26 gauge wire, because some 26 gauge wire would also be handy. I'm most likely gonna have to do that at some point, so that way I have that wire ready as well. Again, if I have those loops and I have that wire, that is marked on the actual round nose pliers. I know also that I'm making the loops the same size no matter what size wire I'm working with. Once you have the end of the wire, you may have just a tiny little bit left. Again, don't hold on to it. Cut it off, put it in your dish. Go in then if you want to while you're doing this and kind of pinch down that as edges. But like I said, the final thing you're gonna do before you hand it off, before you wear it, is pinch down those edges because you don't want it to actually get onto anybody's clothes and snag. So there's the start of it. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do kind of three of my drops probably at a time, have fun kind of getting more of those darker colors in, maybe even just a link that's just a brass bead by itself just to change up the lengths of the links and have fun, keep going and keep creating. So I just wanted to give an update kind of where I am and what I'm working on. Last night I took home a bunch of those high-end gemstones and played around with them, did a bunch of twisting and turning. I actually forgot my wire here at the store so I ended up using 26 gauge wire that I had at home and I actually like that delicate look of the 26 gauge wire a little bit better than the 24 gauge wire in that gold filled round. I do think I need to brighten it up a little bit so I have the pearls here that I came to the store and grabbed and I'll continue with a couple more strands. I have five strands done and they're all when I lined them up and did them I made sure that not all the turquoise was sitting in the exact same spot at inch number two. I made sure to kind of vary it. Some strands have more turquoise, some have very little turquoise, one has no turquoise at all or one piece, and changing up exactly how I'm hanging those briolettes. So that way, as I do it and create the binding at the end, kind of pulling them together, they're not going to look out of place. And I'll play around with, I can't remember which side I started with and which side was left or right, but I'll look at that and as I kind of take that into consideration, continue to build more strands. So I have five done and I did want at least six strands. I'm thinking now that I might do at least three more. I'm reconsidering the endings that I had picked and I'm thinking possibly now that I'm just going to bring them back into one actual bead or a cone or something like that. So I'll keep you updated. I'm going to add in a couple more strands using some pearls to brighten it up because I love pearls. And then I'm still considering leather along the back and I have some actually ultra micro fiber suede um, that I might use along the back to kind of bring some depth to it. Connecting how, I'm not exactly sure I might still go into those bars or I may connect it in a different manner. And when I get all my strands done, I will figure that out. So as you can see, I've been pretty busy twisting and turning. I'm also modeling some of them. I decided actually to make um, all of my children's teachers these because I thought they were great teachers' gifts that they could wear them. I ha I'm modeling two of them right now. I have three done. I'm working on a fourth, just keeping it simple as well. So I'll show you kind of how to put a clasp on and the alternative for that. But working with this one here, I did decide to do more strands. So at home, I turned away for a little bit and went with that 26 gauge wire and I ended up with seven strands. I did three in the middle and then two on the outer, going with the gold bar and connecting to them. On the outside then, I did switch back to the 24 gauge wire since this is gonna be what's holding my leather together. So what I'm gonna show you now is kind of how I'm measuring this in order to do the end. So you wanna make sure if you don't want them to cross in the middle, that whatever bean strand is first on the one side, and I'm getting mine untwisted here, Whatever strand is first on the one side is also going to be first on the other side. So here I have the ending, and what I'm gonna be doing is making a connection with that thinner wire. So just like we've been doing, twisting away, going back and making my loop. And then as I make my loop, I'm gonna go in and attach it to the loop that's provided. Again, the most important thing when you're doing something like this is that you are using the uh, same order from one side to the other. So I'm turning that over, cutting that off. Once I cut this off then, and it's gonna be the exact same thing over and over. I'm gonna stick a bead on. 
And then on this side, when I do my loop, I'm going to go in with my round nose pliers, do my loop. Now again, go back and find that first strand and you're gonna slide this into the first strand. All of my strands are pretty much the same length. I'm not worrying if they're bunching up a little bit because I want them to look bunched. That's the look that I'm going for. So I didn't worry if they are sitting the exact same or just a tiny bit off. I'm making sure that they're sitting approximately the same, but they're gonna have about um, a quarter inch difference in some of the lengths to the other ones. So I wanted to go in and show you basically what happened after twisting and attaching all of the beads. I decided to add on the extra bead on the side, just like the other side. And I did that with the 24 gauge wires. So the thicker of the two gauge wires that I was working with. At the end, I did a double loop going around my round nose pliers two times. What that allowed me to do then is create a little bit heavier of a base to take this suede cording and took that 24 gauge wire then and just did four or wraps around the cording with the suede to hold it in place rather than using something glue or something like that. I wanted to continue with kind of that freeform style. So the necklace itself, I made 18 inches and I really do love the way that it turned out. I even am modeling some of the other ones that I have here. I ended up making these for teacher's gifts and have a number of different just simplistic that you can work with doing the single strand. They also work really, really great for layering. So I did one that's a little bit longer here and one that's a little bit shorter. And when I wear them too, you can see up here at the top, when I wear them, they layer really nicely one inside of the other and they look really pretty. Again, I'm going to be passing these off kind of as Christmas gifts for teachers and gifts for them. But the auction piece here that I did and the gemstone piece, working with it and kind of going from that design concept to actually the finish the design, showing how to do those coiled eye pins and what we're gonna to attach to. Around the back too, I made my own clasp with just a little bit of a trigger clasp and did the same thing, folded the cording over, made a loop here with that 24 gauge wire, put a bead in the middle to make another link and then attached it. I think I'm still gonna throw some extender chain or chain on the back here. That way it can get a little bit shorter or a little bit longer when you're working on it, but it's really versatile. And whether or not you put something at the bottom, some sort of drop at the bottom, or just keep it all one long piece and have it nice and kind of uh, doubled up with another design or keep it on its own. The technique is really wonderful. The idea of just kind of going as you can and as you're making it, playing around with the wire and twisting and getting that design from the start to the finish and working with these high-end gemstones. It was a lot of fun to go back to the gemstones. I kind of got addicted and kept turning and kept making them and got to really utilize the wire working skills that I don't actually use that often anymore. And like I said, I got to make a bunch of different necklaces that I'm sampling as I wear them and I'm going to hand them off and I think they'll make uh, people really excited for Christmas gifts that I'm handing them off to. But you can give them at any time of the year. This is a great also gift idea because you don't need that many beads for it. If you go with inexpensive wire, you really don't have that much investment in the wire. And you can even create your own findings and create your own design at the end too. So keep in mind, this is not so much instructional. You can go back and watch the different videos on doing those coiled eye pins and working with wire. Get a perfectionist kind of viewpoint on that, on the techniques that are used for that and then watch this video from the start to the finish seeing how things change from the original design concept to the actual finished design as well so hopefully it's been a pleasure for you to watch and to um, kind of grow with this design emmy you've seen all kinds of things happen in this video with the changes in outfits because it's gone over multiple days, the changes even in the logo that happened during this design. And really I had fun working with these beads. So hopefully you got to learn a little bit something, you saw that design process from the start and then for the finished product as well. As always, if you want to, right below that like button is a listing of some of the materials that I used in the video that you can purchase from us online at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. And again, we're always happy to have you show what you you make, interact, and engage with us more in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. As always, have fun with your designs, whether or not they change along the way or they're exactly the way that you think. Have fun creating, designing, and until next time, enjoy your bead weaving.